Hey everybody, welcome back to Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com and here on my YouTube channel and we are back for another episode of Inside the Mix. This time we're going to check out a band from the great state of Connecticut, my hometown. We're going to check out Laney and the Wildfire. The name of the song is Dime. Now I want to say thank you to the group for allowing us to use this song as part of our In the Mix series and we're going to listen to more of their music in upcoming videos here on the channel with gear demos and such. So go check out Laney and the Wildfire. All the links will be in the description box below. They got some cool YouTube videos, Facebook, Instagram, their own website, and they're going to be putting out some new music soon. So go check them out. You're really going to dig them. All the links are in the description box below. So I'm going to walk you through the mix. The mix is done. They signed off the mix yesterday. So before I pull it off the console, I'm just going to kind of walk you through, give you an overview and tell you about some of the gear that I used and let you listen to the track. But before we get started, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And also, by the way, YouTube Analytics tells me that 70% of you, roughly, that watch all the videos on this channel are not subscribed to our channel, which is crazy. So please, if you're one of those 70%, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. And if you wanna hit the notification bell, that would be okay too, but that really does help me. So if you can uh, do me that favor, that would be great. And if this channel helps you in any way, shape, or form, hit the super thanks button as well. We got a lot of cool stuff on this channel around the analog slash hybrid workflow. So now that we got out of that out of the way, let's talk about this tune. Okay, so first, before we walk through all the settings and talk about the gear, which is what you all want to know about, let's jump over here into Studio One and let's check out here Laney and the Wildfire. Again, thank you so much for allowing us to use this song. Here's the group right here, and the name of the song is Dime, which is a great tune, by the way. Kind of Americana pop, Americana stuff. Slightly rock. What I'm going to play for you here is maybe the first uh, verse and chorus here um, on the print track. This is the actual mix that they signed off on that they enjoyed. It really sounds great. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of break it down a little bit and I'll tell you about the gear. So here, enjoy, listen to Laney and the Wildfire Dime. Here we go. So there's a little bit of Laney and the Wildfire's Dime. Go check them out again. Links will all be in the description box. So I'm going to get rid of this print track here so we can listen to the stuff coming right off the console. Um, and we could talk a little bit about what we have. Whoops, let me just get rid of all the mutes and everything. Let me uh, just make sure we got everything doing what we want it to do here. Hold on. Let me just play this back quickly. Okay, there we go. Okay, I got to make sure everything is set up for the video. Okay, so Dime, what do we do here? So again, I'm not going to show you every single EQ move and so on and so forth, but I want to just kind of run down an overview of what we did here. So this track um, has, uh, what, 30, 29 tracks in it. If we look at Studio One, you can see the breakdown of the section, of the, of the session. We have a kick, snare top, a snare sample, a bottom snare mic, hats, uh, three toms, tom one, two, and a floor. Overheads left and right, a room, mono mic, a ride mic, shaker tambo, bass guitar, 
guitar solo track, two rhythm guitars throughout the song left and right. We have a piano track, an organ track, and then we have some background vocals and then the lead vocal there. So we have a total of, uh, let's see, 24 tracks on the console. We're taking up 29 faders due to some of these are stereo tracks and they're taking up two faders. So that's what we have going on in the session. So let's start with the master bus and what the master bus signal flow is. So on the master bus, we are going from the um, Gain Lab Audio Empress EQ from there into the Neve Portico 542s. And then we're going to the SPL Big, the Stereo Widening um, Module. And this is actually the only the second mix I've done with it. And that thing sounds awesome, by the way. There'll be a YouTube video here, or a review video here at one point or another, depending on when you're watching this video. You may go check that out. And then from the Big, it's coming back into the console on the G-Series bus compressor here. And we're doing about 4 dB of compression. We're doing a 10 millisecond attack and an auto release. And that's pretty much my standard setup most times. Um, and then what I do is I just dial the threshold up or down depending on uh, how much compression I want. Usually it's 3 to 4 dB, not too much. So what I'm going to do is going to play this back a little bit. And what I can do is I can take away the bus compressor and I can also take away uh, with this button here uh, the insert point, which is the, the EQ to the 542 to the big. On the Empress EQ, as far as EQ settings go, um, I know I'm putting, uh, I'm, I'm adding about one and a half dB at 300 hertz in the midsection. Um, I'm also adding um, a little bit around 30 hertz, I think one dB at the very, very bottom. And then I'm adding a little bit of crispiness at the top at around 12K. I'm also using the tube drive circuit on there, which adds a little bit more saturation, which is great. Um, and again, coming soon, depending on when you're seeing this video, there may or may not be <laughs> uh, a video review on that EQ, but it's on the list to do. So it will be there uh, shortly if it isn't there already. Uh, but that EQ is awesome. Uh, so that's what we're doing on the EQ. On the 542s, I'm running it into the red circuit on the Neves, which is typically what I do. And I'm not slamming it. I'm kind of hitting the sweet spot on there. I'm using the... Uh, I think I'm using uh, 30 inches per second on the tape speed on this one, and on the um, on the on the uh, in the saturation meters, I kind of just hit the the amber like two thirds of the way up. That's kind of the sweet spot. So anyway, I'll play this back. I'll take away both um, compressor and the insert, so you hear nothing on the master bus, and I'll put it back in. If you look at the overhead camera, the green lights means they're in. No green lights means they're out. So I'll start with them in and then I'll take them away. So let's listen a little bit. Okay, so there you go. So the second time around, I level matched it a little more by turning down the makeup gain on the compressor. So now they're exactly level matched, but it's just slightly louder. So what you hear there, if maybe you don't hear it across YouTube, but the SPL Big really spreads out the mix really nice. And I'm using the bass feature on the SPL Big, and that really adds a nice little thickness to the low end. And the compressor just kind of squeezes it together. And again, the Empress EQ, again, just adds all that saturation. So in that master bus between the Empress EQ with the input, the output transformer, and it's a tube equalizer, it's a pull tech with, a, with um, some modern features, including a mid band, and then the additional tube saturation circuit, and then going to the 542s, which gives you that saturation. Um, there's a lot of saturation going on there, um, which is really helping color and just kind of gluing everything together. What I'm not using in this mix, if you haven't realized, if you've been here a while following the channels, I'm not using the SSL Fusion in this mix at all. I'm trying to a different signal path without using the Fusion. I think it sounds great. So that's the master bus. So now let's just talk about the drums. So let's go to our drum sound here. Uh, first, I'll also take away the reverb um, on the track. So we're only using a little bit of reverb and delay. But for now, let's listen to the drums here.
Okay, that's our finished drum sound. So um, what we're doing primarily is we have a few, some processing happening on the individual tracks, but we also then just have it on the drum bus. So all the drums are coming down to a drum bus. On our kick, we're just doing some EQ and we're using also um, for compression, I'm using the DBX 160A, just hitting it about two dB of compression. I'm really starting to enjoy that 160A on kick. Um, typically I don't compress unless it really needs it. Like a drum performance like this, and this is live rec recorded drums, is the drumming is kind of mild. It's not big, heavy, you know, uh, rock and roll, and it's, kind of, and it's performed really well. The drummer of this band played these things very consistently. So in a case like this, I typically wouldn't compress the drums except for on the bus, which we did. However, on the kick drum, I really like what the 160 is doing to the kick. It just adds a little bit of click and, and, and uh, elongates it a little bit. So if I just solo up the kick drum here, and I'll take away the compressor just by doing this on the board here. So here's with it. So it just gives a little bit of a little bit of uh, sub frequency and just kind of brings up the, the girth of the kick a little bit and it kind of sustains it a little bit too. It's pretty subtle. You may not be able to hear it over YouTube, but um, on kick drum, even if you're using plugins, check out like a DB160 plugin or if you have the hardware. These 160A compressors are great. Um, and for the for the price, if you're into hardware, these things on reverb or you know eBay or 350 bucks in good condition. Now I've had mine modified by Revive Audio and we did a video on the channel about that and they're really cool, but even the stock ones sound great. For 300 and between three and $400, you get an awesome compressor. Those 160s are great. I should have two or three more, but they sound really great on kick. So that's what we're doing on the kick. On the rest of the drums, the only other thing we're using is on the toms, which he doesn't have a ton of tom fills in this song. And I'm using the Apex 204s on that, which is pretty standard. Almost every single drum uh, set or drums that I mix, it's rare that I don't use the Aphex 204 on the toms, on both the racks and the floors. They just sound great. And again, there's a review on the channel that we've done about the Aphex 204s. Check those out. Um, you can't get them anymore. They don't make them. But again, you can find them on Reverb for about $300 or $400. I think I paid a little under $400 for both of them. And they're stereo units. So I have two of those units, which gives me left, right, left, right. So I can put up the four toms. Um, I also know they sound great on bass guitar as well. It's another really cool thing. And I've even experimented with it on kick drum. I think during that video review I spoke of. Um, so they're cool. So again, you're looking for some, uh, some affordable hardware that's really a great utility tool. Those are really cool. Then all of that is coming down to a drum bus. There's no other, no other compression anywhere on the drums except on the drum bus. And on the drum bus, we're using my staple, um, NG bus compressor by Wes Audio, and it's controlled digitally by a plugin here. There we go. So if we play this back. So I'm compressing about 4 dB because again, I'm not really compressing on the drums very much. Um, I'm doing a four to one ratio. I'm using the total harmonic distortion circuit about halfway up, which I like. I'm not even using the transformer circuit because on this particular song, it didn't feel like it needed it. The transformer circuit in this thing, even very mild, is going to give it a little more compression, but I didn't feel like it needed it. And I'm using a side chain filter at 60 hertz, so I'll just bypass it here on the plug-in so you can hear the difference. So it brings a little more of the overheads out. It sustains the snare a little bit more. The snare sounds a little bit wider and the kick gets a little more punchy. Again, I use this every time I say I'm going to use this compressor on something else in the mix because I just love the way it sounds. I always come back to drums because I just love it on drums. Um, people ask me a lot about what's my favorite drum bus compressor. I have a lot of compressors I've used on drums and they all sound great. This is my favorite because of the versatility. This is also a great unit for the master bus. If you are looking for a stereo master bus compressor with a ton of flexibility, 
between the total harmonic distortion, variable circuit, as well as the transformer circuit. This is a great piece to have. And again, it's all controlled digitally by a plug-in with an analog signal path that you can either go touch the, the unit or you can just do it here. Now, from there, we're going to the API 5500 Stereo EQ, and that's what I'm using. Um, and on the EQ, we're boosting uh, about 4 dB at 60 hertz, and also at 5K, we're boosting about 2 dB, and then again at 12K. So I can't bypass this here. I have to go over to the unit and turn it on and off. But I'll leave the compressor in, and I'll just turn and take the EQ in and out so you can hear it, okay? So here is with it, and then you'll hear it go away. Here we go. So that's another piece that I love that API 5500. Again, I wish I had two of them. They're pretty expensive, but I love them. Awesome on drums. They give that real nice thickness and power to the kick, but it doesn't get flubby or farty at all. And it just adds a little more crack and presence to the snare. That's a wonderful EQ. If you're in the market for a stereo EQ, again, also sounds amazing on electric guitars. Could be great on a master bus as well. But on drums, I find that the NG bus compressor into that unit, there's just no substitute for it. So I'll take away both units. We'll start with them off. We'll take, we'll bypass the NG bus, we'll bypass the EQ, and then I'll bring them both in. So bypass both. Here's without it, and then I'll bring in both of them at one and the other. Here we go. So there's the combination of the Wes Audio NG Bus and the API 5500 Stereo EQ. So that's our finished drum sound. Bass guitar, um, pretty standard uh, for my bass. Now what I did do here is um, in the box here, um, I added a plug-in. But you, I've been doing this more and more um, recently. I had the Universal Audio um, SVT3 Pro. I just love it. Not that, not that the bass didn't sound good on its own. I'm going to play it without. I'm going to bypass it. Here's the bass guitar all by itself. So it just makes everything sound thicker and warmer. I just like the way it sounds. Just sounds freaking fantastic. I love that um, that this uh, this plugin. It's great. So I'm using that, and then from there we are going to what are we doing for compression? Oh, we're using the DBX 160A, the second unit that I have, compressing about 60 b of compression. Um, nothing major. So let me take it away so I can take the I could take the insert away right here. So Yeah, about 6 8 dB of compression. 4 to 1 ratio, pretty fast attack. So here's with it and I'll take it away. So again, just tightens it up a little bit. It sounds really good. And again, back to the plug-in with the plug-in. So it just sounds really great. Just love the way it sounds. The, this plug-in is great. So I've been doing that more and more, as I said. Um, been way more, um, whenever I get like a direct bass sound, I like using these universal audio plugins. I think they sound really good. Um, I have a few of them and this one sounds great. Okay. So that's what we did for bass. 
for our guitars here, we have three guitar tracks. We got left, right, and then we have a guitar, a little solo diddle in the center. Uh, for guitars, all we're using is the guitar solo. We're using a distressor, um, the first distressor that I have, which I can solo up right here. I'll just kind of cycle this through. Let's get to our solo. Medium style attack, doing quite a bit of compression, probably 8 dB or so. I'll take it away here. Let's uh, start with it and I'll take it away. So what it's really doing there is on some of those notes that really kind of poking out, it squeezes it in and just kind of tightens it all up. Um, I love the distressor on the guitar solo. It just sounds really good. And that's the only little diddle that they play there in the song as far as the guitars go for a solo. It's just a little lick. Now for the two main guitars, the left and right, which play during the whole song that are panned hard left and right, I am using the LA3 or the VA3s by Audioscape. I have two of them, one for one track, one for the other. Uh, here's what those guitars sound like. Let's go back here to where they're playing a little bit more heavy handed. So I'll just take them away. They're in right now. And when I take them out, you'll see the green lights go away or just watch my hand. It's pretty intentional. I'll start with them on then I'll take them away. So what I like about those VA3s, and we're doing a lot of compression here, we're doing about 8 dB of compression because these are kind of slightly distorted guitars. But what I love about the VA3 or LA3 type is they get, they get nice and bright and open sounding, which is what I like. It squeezes it a little bit, yes, but you can press, you can, um, you can push these things pretty hard and they don't get, you know, overly compressed sounding. I love those VA3s on guitars. So those are our two guitars. Now, if we go to the next set of tracks, we have is our piano track, our main piano track, and then we have a main organ track. Um, and the guitar, oh, bass and guitars are also coming down to a bus, but we're not putting anything on there on the bus. Our piano, however, our main piano, stereo left and right, that's coming down to a bus, and I'm using on that the uh, the West Audio Rhea as our um, as our compressor of choice here. So if I open this up here again, it's digitally controlled with a plugin. So we can come over here, to, oops, to the Rhea. Let's see if we could solo up our pianos. So about 6 dB of compression. Now, again, what I love about the West Audio stuff is not only because it's digitally controlled with a plugin, which is wonderful, this is a very mute compressor, but they have the total harmonic distortion circuit here, which can either be off, a medium, or a high setting. I always tend to keep it on the high setting because it's subtle, but it sounds really good. We're doing a fast attack, fairly slow release, and I'll just bypass it here so you can hear the difference. Here we go. Here is with it, and then I'll bypass it. So it just brings out the richness of the low end of the piano and it helps sustain the notes and it gets a little bit more sparkly. So it sounds great. Love the Rhea on pianos. They also sound great on string sections as well. Okay, so that's the main piano coming down to a bus. Then we have um, an organ that's coming down to its own separate bus as well. And the organ um, is going to another Wes Audio, let me just cycle it up here. Where are we, the organ? Okay, we're getting towards the end of the song. Um, we're using the Wes Audio Dion, which is a VCA um, SSL bus compressor style, if you will. 
Again, same layout as the RIA in that we have, um, we're doing a four to one ratio here, doing a, again, fairly um, fast attack, auto release. We're using the total harmonic distortion circuit again because I like it and it's on the high setting. So here's our organ that kind of fills in on the chorus. And just brings everything to life. I really like it a lot. I love the, the I love the saturation circuit that's in this thing. It's just great. So that's our organ track coming down to a bus. Then our last set of tracks here is we have our lead vocal, the star of the show, Lainey. And she's an amazing singer. So as you can expect, there's not a whole lot of processing that needs to be done to her. But I wanted to give her some, I wanted to really give her some style. I wanted to style up her voice a little bit, right? So there's a few things we're doing to her vocal here. Um, we are going from uh let's see we are using on her lead vocal we are using the uh, v comp by audioscape which sounds awesome on female vocals not that it doesn't sound good on male vocals but i find that it sounds so good on female vocals and we're compressing her about 10 db but it's it's it reminds me a lot of like a you know like a fair child in that you can just compress everything to death and it doesn't sound it it just gives some richness to her vocal and pulls her right up front and center, which is where we want her to be, right? The star of the song is her. So that's what we want. Um, and then from there, we're going to the Pultec, the Audioscape EQP. And then from there, I'm going into my SPL DSer, just to top a little, there's a couple of places where she gets a little sibilant and I just wanted to tap them down a little bit. And I'm boosting up on the on the, on the the Pultec uh, 10K, we're, we're putting about five dB or so on her voice too. So anyway, Let's uh, solo up her vocal here. If we could do that. Hey, this ain't some sentimental thing. Oh, other thing I did with her voice for reverb and delay um, is I'm using the, in the box here, I'm using the uh, CLA Epic uh, Delay Reverb plugin and I'm using it as an insert, but I'm turning down the mix. I'm using the mix control is how much I want to dial in before we get to the console. Um, and sometimes I'll EQ it in the box. If I, if I'm, if I know I'm going to put a lot of top end on the vocal, I'll EQ some of that out at the plugin. So the reverb doesn't have that top end in it, but it sounds really good here. I love this CLA, uh, plugin, this Epic plugin. Love it. I love the reverb, the delays into the reverbs. There's four different delays, four different reverbs. I'm only using two delays and two reverbs on this particular track. And again, I just put it on as an insert and I just use the mix control to how much I want. And I really like it. So it sounds like there's a lot on her voice in solo, but in the track, you barely hear it, which is what we wanted. So um, let me um, let me take away that for a minute so we can just hear her vocal without the processing. You got the money, I got needs. And I'm gonna take away the insert point, which is gonna take away the V-Comp and the de and the EQP, here we go. Gotta live, gotta love, gotta soul to feed. You can pay me. I am already rich in dreams. So don't try to sell me on your scheme. I know a job's a job, not an identity. Lie, 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 lie. Don't have to love your occupation. Work is what you make it. Lie, 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 getting paid is a transaction, labor you can cash in. So that V-comp really squeezes the vocal really nice. And again, we're compressing quite a bit. Oh, you are not defined by... Anywhere between 12 and 15 dB. Um, and we're using um, a pretty fast attack there in a medium style release because I wanted it to grab the vocal and sit it up front and leave it there. So by using a little bit of a slower release time, it just holds that compression there, which I really like. Um, and then the EQP really brightens it up. And again, it sounds like it's a little bright in solo, but in the track with all the other density going on with all the other instruments, it fits kind of nice. So in the track, here's what we have. And I'll just, we're, we have it in the circuit. I'll pull it away, put it back in. Here we go.
So the other thing that this compressor is doing is when she gets to the end of the phrases on certain lines, especially in the verse, as she starts to tail off without that compression, you tend to lose the end of the phrase a little bit. This brings it up and you could hear everything from beginning to end on that, which I really like. So the V-Comp, again, really cool by Audioscape. It's another great piece. I mean, they don't make garbage, Audioscape. Everything they make is great. That V-Comp, awesome on female vocals, awesome on grand piano. String sections are great too. Not that it doesn't sound good on everything, but those three things, and every time I have a female vocalist now, I'm leaning towards that, where I used to go lean towards like the 76A by Audioscape. Now I'm leaning on this V-Comp because I just like the way it sounds, especially on Lainey's voice. It sounds really, really good. And then the last thing we have is just some background vocals in the chorus. They're all coming down to a bus here as well. And on that, I'm using the Audioscape again, the 260VU, which is the one is the DBX stereo compressor. Again, hitting them pretty hard. Um, and it just sound just sounds great. So here's our background vocals here. If I could solo these up, here we go. Lie, lie, lie. Occupation, what you make it. Lie, lie, lie. Again, about 15 dB of compression on those that DBX or the excuse me, the Audioscape 260VU. That's another compressor that on vocals I've been experimenting with with some different mixes. And you can hit that thing really hard. It never sounds like you're compressing it. It just sounds better almost the harder that you hit it. So that 260VU is an awesome compressor as well. So I'm having a newfound love for DBX compressors and DBX, you know, clones of the compressors. I love the DBX stuff. I don't know what, it never was never one of my go-tos in the past, but since I've been using the hardware stuff, it sounds great. So I encourage you to check it out or check out the plug-in counterparts if you can. Um, and that's really it. That's all there was to this song. This song is kind of simple, well-written, well-arranged, certainly well-performed. So that's the breakdown of all the gear. And again, there's some EQ and stuff. Oh, and the last thing I'll tell you is on everything except for the vocals, all, not everything, for all the shakers, the tambourines, the, the guitars, the pianos, the background vocals, are all going through the reverb, the XL305R by Audioscape uh, here as well. Again, just to give everything just a little bit of a little bit of size. Again, it's very, very, very subtle. So I can play back the track and you'll see on the overhead when the red light is is on, it means it's not engaged. When I take it off, you'll hear the reverb. Again, it's subtle, but it gives a little bit more size and a little bit more space. Here we go. I'll start with it off and then I'll bring it in. Pain is a trans You can hear the wash. I love that. I use it on every single mix, uh, this XL305 by Audioscape. And again, it's a spring reverb, right? It's, uh, it's analog, not digital. And what I love about it is I just put a little bit underneath the track to give the whole track a little bit of size. It's not really noticeable. It's more felt than heard. Uh, it's not being, it is being used on the snares. I, it is. It's not being used on the kick. It's uh, not being used on the toms, the direct mic, but it's being used on the overheads in the room and the ride cymbal. Um, and it's not being used on bass, but it's being used on everything else. With the exception of uh, the lead vocal, she's using the plugin as I showed you. And then last but not least on the master bus here on the print track, um, I'm using a couple of my standard go-tos. I'm using the um, Universal Audio K-Stereo. Again, this is kind of a, it's an ambient recovery. It gives it a little bit more sense of space. And again, I'll play it and take it away so you can hear the difference. It's subtle. It's part of life and that's the game. So balance time and love with a little something in the bank. I'm not ashamed. We all got bills to pay. So take your check, go on your way. Make the rest of every day worth the hour. Keep 
So it just puts a little bit more space around everything. It's just, this is a, again, it, the only one that makes anything like this, as far as I know, is Universal Audio. And if you're a Universal Audio user, you should get this. This is a great plugin. I use it on every single mix. Um, and then after that, not using Ozone 10 in this mix at all. I was just using it to check phase, and that's it. So that is uh, that is really it. That's that's the entire mix. Um, it's a great tune. I encourage you to go check out Laney and the Wildfire. Again, all the links will be in the description box below. Thank you again to the band for allowing me to use this track. I had a lot of fun, and again, they've sent me some more of their sessions, so we're going to be featuring more of their stuff here on the channel as well, as including a couple of live concert performance multi-tracks, which are really cool. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun too. So they'll be on the channel. So make sure, again, you like, share, and subscribe. And like I said, if you're one of the 70% that's not subscribed to the channel and you're watching this channel, please do me a favor and subscribe. Leave comments below. Go show the band some love. All the links will be in the description box below. Now, last but not least, depending on when you're watching this video, if you're into analog mixing, hybrid mixing, and you want to see um, a full mix being done from start to finish, all in real time, almost six hours long, and you want the multi-track so you can mix the song along with me, check out my hybrid mixing courses. We have two of them um, by the summer of 2023. We have Mixing Pop, and then we have Mixing Acoustic Rock. Again, links will be in the description box below. You get all the multi-track files. You get to mix along with me. And even if you don't have any hardware, any gear at all, I spend a lot of time in each one of those courses showing you how you can emulate this workflow using the plugins uh, that you may have on your system. And I talk you through that. So whether you're all in the box, halfway in the box, hybrid with some hardware and some plugins, or whether you're mostly analog like I am here, that course will be great for you. It's perfect for people at the intermediate and advanced level stages of mixing. Again, hybrid mixing. All the links will be in the description box below. And until the next Inside the Mix episode, I've been Dave with Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com. Thank you so much for watching me today, everybody, and I'll see you guys soon.